Welcome back. This is a love story. On the day after Jack Benny's death, in December 1974, I wonder how many, if everybody know, remembers Jack Benny, but he was quite a man. A single long-stemmed red rose was delivered to Mary Livingston Benny, his wife of 48 years. When the blossoms continued to arrive day after day, Mary called the florist to find out who sent them. Quite a while before Jack passed away, the florist told her, he stopped in to send a bouquet. As he was leaving, he suddenly turned back and said, If anything should happen to me, I want you to send Mary a single rose every day. There was complete silence on Mary's end of the line. Then weeping, she said, Goodbye. Subsequently, Mary learned that Jack had actually included a provision for the flowers in his will. One perfect rose daily for the rest of her life. A beautiful gift from a great husband. Lost with all hands aboard. Many years ago, a young officer in the English Navy discovered a small, unchartered, but dangerous rock in the Mediterranean Sea. He reported his discovery to the uh, Admiral, Admiralty immediately. Orders were sent to all the stations that the new hazard would be marked on every chart. The first ship sailed over the spot after the news was sent out was commanded by an old sea captain who had been sailing those waters for many years. When he noted the warning newly placed on his map, he inquired who reported the hazard. When told it was a young naval officer, he was indignant. There is no such rock there, he scoffed. I have sailed these seas for 20 years, and if such a rock were there, I would have found it. In scornful pride, he gave orders for his sailing master to steer directly over the spot indicated. The anchor was raised and the ship left port. The hazardous area was reached. Under full sail, the gallant ship was driven over the danger spot. There was a tremendous crash as the jagged rock tore relentlessly into the vessel's underside. The noble craft went down with all hands. Thousands of professed Christians, some of them, alas, apparently good Christians, have wrecked the bark of their own Christian experience because they scorned or neglected to heed the warnings of the master pilot in his unfailing guidebook, the Bible. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, the psalmist says. The captain of our destiny has provided a chart and compass to guide us safely through the dark night of sin. No matter how loudly the waves of temptations rear about us. You and I need this light in these dark days when there are seemingly more snares, more temptations in our path each day than ever before. Unless we do have the light of God's word shining upon our pathway, we are likely to stumble into these snares and temptations without God's word guiding in each day. We may very well be lost eternally. Many professed Christians, some professed Christians, have time for the daily paper, the secular journals, and a thousand and one other books that demand their attention. But the book of books, their chart and compass, is seldom opened and studied. Yet, such people do no doubt actually believe that they are safe spiritually, just like the old sea captain, simply because they are church members. An unknown poet puts it this way. 
They read the journal and the news, the green book and the red. They kept the cereals of the month securely in their head. They went through books, both old and new, bestsellers too, they thought. They read the jokes and studied styles. No item went for naught. They read the sporting page. They knew each athlete by his name. They read a baseball, football, golf, familiar with each game. They looked the funny paper through. They watched the mails to cease. The magazine they liked the best, whose columns most did please. But in their homes, there was a book with pages never turned, whose messages of truth and hope were still by them unlearned. The book that tells of him who came to earth that we might know the beauty of a sinless life lived here so long ago. What pity tis they do not know this man of Galilee who healed the lame, the blind, the deaf because beside the sapphire sea and still they read and laugh and cry or stories of the hour and let the book dust, dust covered lie unopened in its power. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to pay attention to God's word and his direction. He knows. He has all the answers. God bless you. Thank you.